Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Battalion Wars Revisited. Last time, we did the first campaign's bonus mission and got a relatively good score for it. The only thing that really affected us was the speed. Today, we're heading out to a place that has a lower heat index than what I've been dealing with for the past couple of weeks. We're heading off to the Dune Sea for Beachhead. It's time for us to finally take the fight against the Exylvanians after their very rude introduction at the end of the Tundra and Territories campaign. Our focus of operations now shifts to the Dune Sea. The Exylvanian Air Fleet is moving in mass to control the narrow sight fields inland, and our outposts at Fort Omaha will be will bear the brunt of the invasion spearhead. Reinforce them and repel the invaders. Mission accomplished, Kaiser Vlad. We have swift destruction upon both our enemies. Excellent news, Countess Ingrid. Proceed to the narrow side fields of the Dune Sea as planned. As you wish, Herr Kaiser. For too long, Exylvania has been the playground of frontier warmongers and tundra despots. At last, we will resume our rightful place in history as masters of these inferior nations. And when you are emperor, Herr Kaiser? Yes, evil. I will make you governator. Now go. Rally the troops. We strike again before dawn. Welcome to the Dune Sea, Commander. This is the world's number one repository of Neurocyte. The fuel that fires the enemy's infernal war machine. The Exylvanians have been attacking up and down the coast in an attempt to gain a foothold for the big push inland. We've repelled them so far, but it's only a matter of time before they succeed in capturing one of our bases. Intel suggests that Fort Omaha here is on the hit list, so I expect you to defend it at all costs. Heads up, Commander! Fort Omaha is already under attack! Jeez, and I already just got here. That's a heavy recon you're driving there, Commander. With increased armor and firepower, it's a step up from the light recon. Unfortunately, though, it does not have better handling. But I do have to make note of something that I was actually wrong about. Uh, when it came back to the light recon in comparison to the heavy recon, I said that there was not really a reason for uh, Herman to say that it has increased armor and firepower outside of the fact that it was supposed to be the APC in that mission. I was actually wrong. Uh, doing some past research after that video, I realized that the weapon for the Light Recon is actually just a modified version of the Grunt's rifle, and the tail gun was a heavy ma uh, machine gun. But the Heavy Recon has two heavy machine guns on them, so, which do about as much damage as an Assault Vets uh, weapon. And already starting to fight, huh? Well, it's a good thing I showed up when I did. Now I can finally start directing the boys. If I can drive... Greetings, Frontier Dogs! Commander Ubel is here! <laughs> I heard them extras were ugly, but this fella takes the cake! You want ugly, scrawny little man? Ubel Stormtroopers will show you ugly! Alright, so... Already the beach invasion started, got a couple grunts coming our way, got a lot of air transports. Mainly the attack is going to be coming right from here because it's the only way they can fly in. Uh, they will try to do a couple sneak attacks every now and then, but for the most part it's just going to be a straightforward charge towards the base. So, there's a couple of ways to go about this mission, uh, but there are some ways that I prefer to play this. Now, you could scatter your troops around out on the beachfront, and you could just lay in wait for them, put them behind the sandbags, put them behind, uh, put them inside the pillboxes and such. But, honestly, speaking- uh oh, I'm about to die. I feel like the best strategy for this- I, am I seriously about ready to die to these schmucks? The best strategy to go about defending the base from the Exylvanians is to just straight up garrison it. Get all your troops inside, get them into good firing positions. Usually, I like to put the artillery pieces, one right here, one over here. That way they have good arcing over the walls of the fortress. Let's put our bazookas right here, put our assaults right next to them. 
And the grunts, uh, put them right here. Now, the reason I want to keep everybody inside the base is because of what's coming up next. Uh, acid gas vets. They are the Exovanian equivalent of flame vets. Because, unlike the Frontier and Tundra, Exovanian troops, as well as another nation's troops that will be introduced later in the campaign, have different names for their vests. And I've already uh -oh, just see, lost a just dude. The advance party. We got multiple enemy signals inbound. Acid gas vets are definitely no joke when it comes to Whatever fighting them. You, do, don't let them take the flag. you have two artillery units, Commander. I advise you to position them strategic. What the heck do you want, Austin? This is my command. Of course, General. Just remember, there are fortifications around the base. Select one of your men by tilting up and down on the C stick. Then send him into a bunker by pressing the Y button. Try using this technique to send each of your artillery units to a tactical firing position. He may be nothing more than a big old stuffed shirt, but Austin's right. We're gonna have to dig in for this one. Alright, so what I think Austin's trying to say is you want to put an artillery piece right here and right here. Honestly speaking, if you put them in these positions inside the fort, you're basically golden for the mission. Another thing Austin wanted to note was the MG bunkers around here. I recommend not putting a troop in there unless you just wanted to get needlessly killed. Because from what I've experienced, more often than not, they just sort of ignore the troops. And when bazooka vets and tanks start showing up on the battlefront, they are just basically just fresh target practice for the Exylvanians. So... You're just going to want to just, you know, sit pretty, keep the battalion inside the fort, maybe go out on your own. Don't shoot till you see the whites of their eyes. And if you do have to jump into an MG bunker, but definitely just do it yourself. But the fact that they keep moving, it also means they're kind of hard to hit. And as you can see, uh, for the most part, they run underneath the arc of where your machine gun fire comes from. So, honestly, like I said, if you want to use a pillbox, I would just say maybe use uh, yourself as the gunner and not uh, rely on your troops. Oof. Assault vets definitely the way to go. Uh, just deal with the vets that are coming up through here, especially if you want to make sure that the acid gas hopefully don't get uh, too close to the to the base. And speaking of acid gas, I'm sorry that I keep pulling with the map. I just like to go over this stuff. Right here, a squad of acid gas are trying to sneak around here. That's why I wanted to put the heavy recon there because they will intercept them, and hopefully, uh, will yeah, they're okay. They're starting to attack. Since the Heavy Recon's technically considered a vehicle, and even though the driver and the gunners are exposed, they will take minuscule damage from the acid gas vets. So far, so good. Only a couple of them have reached a flag, but. Uh oh. I saw your Roman back there. Hold on, I gotta deal with this. Yep, here come a squad of tanks. And hopefully, hopefully, okay, good, he was on fire. Unfortunately, a second tank is coming this way. I don't even know where that tank shell went. Well then, maybe you should stop attacking the base then. Alright, Grunts are looking alright so far. I'll go get them over there. Kaiser Vlad will surely demote him back to the rank of Grunt for this. There, there, my pet. Auntie Ingrid will make it all better. Countess Ingrid, your beauty lights up this battlefield. But why are you here? The Kaiser anticipated that Ubel's ground attack might flounder on the beaches, so he dispatched my bombers to help finish the job. She ain't kidding, Commander. We're getting reports of an attack wing of Exylvanian bombers headed our way. Because of course it would never be simple. Hang in there, Commander. Frontier Command of Authorized Reinforcements. They're in route now. And just in time. Special delivery, Commander. Who ordered the anti-air support? 
You know, it's very lucky that Frontier Command authorized the anti-air support for this bomber wing coming in and also the air transports that are making their way over here. Because had they not authorized that or even missile vets, this base would definitely have been lost. Because we have no anti-air defense. Alright, so we can attack the air transports as they try to offload troops. And if you're fast enough and if you get out far enough, you can actually knock them out before they drop off the troops. I kind of was playing a little on the cautious side because if we lose our anti-air vehicle here, then we lose the, the battle. However, this... I can't take care of. It's the only time they ever do an airborne assault as well, but they'll drop the troops off right up inside the base. But if you're able to take them out fast enough, they just fall to their deaths. Alright, let's get inside and get those jerry cans before this thing breaks on me. Alright, here come the bombers. I think it's only a win of three to four bombers that around here. Okay, those are just air transports. I see the bombers coming away. I'll do my best. Definitely gotta call everybody in. Alright, gotta trust the boys. Here come the bombers, and there go the bombers. Yep, there's the other bomber. Mission ends right after we take out all the bomber wings, uh, so definitely just focus on those and get them taken care of as fast as possible. Ooh, uh, that bombing run though definitely did a number on the boys. Outstanding, Commander. An outright victory is a tremendous way to begin a new campaign in style. You may keep your insignificant base, but Ubel will not stop until he has claimed the June Sea in the name of the Kaiser. Those Exylvanians sure are full of hot air. You think it's something to do with this desert climate? Now, it looks like we left a couple of infantry out on the beach. I think that was from that wave of air transports that were flying in. Alright, speed was good, power was good, even though we did leave a few Exylvanians alive. And technique is definitely the thing that hits the most. I think that bombing run that Ingrid's bombers did definitely was the deciding factor in knocking us just out of S rank range. Probably that and also the acid gas sweats. So acid gas really hurts in this game. All right, we got introduced to a few new units. We got the heavy recon for the frontier. It has a crew of three, speed rating of four, weapons rating of two, and armor rating of two. Its role is high-speed anti-infantry, but it's vulnerable to heavy machine gun fire. The Humberg is armed with dual turret and pintle-mounted 50 caliber heavy machine guns. It is effective at fast staining raids against infantry, but while its maneuverability can allow it to evade enemy rockets, its light armor does leave it susceptible to heavy machine gun fire. We were also introduced in this mission to the anti-air vehicle. It has a crew of 2, speed rating of 2, weapons rating of 2, and an armor rating of 3. Its role is anti-air, but it's vulnerable to tanks and rockets. The Prometheus AIM 9RR mobile missile platform fires a barrage of 8 deadly IS-3 Silverfish missiles. This unit is a scourge of enemy air forces, but is unable to radar lock low-level targets, and hence is widely inaccurate against them. Alright. Well, the battle for the Dune Sea has just begun. Next time on Battalion Wars Revisited, we're going to go help our boys in the Tundra and Territories uh, get out of a sticky situation in Invasion Force. See you guys next time. Later. I need ice cream. Woohoo! Oh, brother. <laughs>